Dr. Anthony B. Miller is a distinguished researcher and physician, one of my collaborators on a number of things from, for the past 30 years, and he is, his titles would take us all, all evening to discuss. He's a member of the Royal College of Physicians of England and Canada, and has many awards, including the, uh, you didn't put this one down, the Order of the Merit from, from Canada, right? Thank you. Well, thank you, Deborah. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming. And I'm delighted to be in this beautiful part of the world. This week is the first time I've ever been here. Now, I want to discuss the human evidence that cell phones probably cause brain cancer, not possibly, as was concluded by IOC in 2011. There are actually three important sets of human studies that lead me to this conclusion. The interphone study that Dr. Sasko described has conducted further analyses, particularly of the study that was conducted in Canada, and they have confirmed a doubling of risk, twofold increased risk for 10 or more years use of cell phone. And Leonard Hardell in Sweden and his colleagues who'd done numerous studies before has again uh, conducted further studies and combined analyses and he confirms a two to five fold increased risk after prolonged use of cell and cordless phones. It's amazing to me that the telecommunications companies if they're advertising phones is always cordless but these it's the ones which are linked directly not cordless which are safe it's the cordless which are dangerous. And then there is a very important study in three areas of France, which has found an up to five-fold increased risk for those with five or more years of cell phone use. And this shows the increase in risk with increasing duration of calls. And duration of calls and duration of use are very important in terms of showing increased risk, both, sorry, I'm gonna go back, for the malignant tumors, the, uh, the gliomas, and also, interestingly, the tumors of the lining of the brain. So we have to be extremely cautious over uh, prolonged use of uh, cell phones, and as I've said in, uh, of cordless phones also. Now, many people, many journalists particularly, ask why has there been no overall increased cancer incidence? Well, the reason is the expectation is that change will be slow. We're dealing with something which is increasing the risk of rather a, a rare tumor and we expect that the change will occur, but it will be, for a while, small. Also, there have been a number of changes in the way we diagnose brain cancers. Head CTs, they have changed the issue. We've had situations where what used to be diagnosed clinically as a stroke is now recognized as bleeding from us from a uh, brain tumor but also we found there are brain tumors in different areas of the brain that we didn't know. So there is likely to be some confusion. And the latent period uh, to see a major effect is likely to be prolonged. We know this was so for tobacco smoking. It took 30 to 40 years before the major effects were recognized. And we're nowhere near that duration in uh, uh, relation to cell phone use in relation to radio frequency, as we call it, radiation. But we do know that cases are increasing in younger people. And this has been noted in the United States, in the UK, in Australia and Israel. And interestingly, in Israel, they've also found an increase in tumors of the parotid gland, which is very close to where you would put a cell phone. And we now know that brain tumors are now the highest incidence cancers in US adolescents. And this is a relatively recent report. 
that appeared in 2016. Uh, and they have overtaken other tumors in adolescence as being the common cancer. So things are happening. It isn't nothing is happening, things are happening. My conclusion from epidemiology is that in the light of these new studies, adding to the evidence that was available to IARC in 2011, is that radiofrequency radiation is a probable human carcinogen. And that is, as Dr. Sasko has said, IRC category 2A. That couldn't be ignored. But when you add the animal study from the National Toxicology Program, the combined evidence, in my view, is that there is now sufficient evidence that radiofrequency radiation is carcinogenic to humans. That's IR category one, and you can't ignore that. And the implications of this, we have to be cautious. Radiofrequency radiation is now ubiquitous. We're probably exposed to it in this room, even though we do not want to be. And we know that although the risk per individual is low, the radiation is widely distributed. I was astounded when I went up one of your peaks to find a cell tower at the top of the tram. My goodness, what are they doing to people? And when we continue doing this, this could result in major public health problems. And what we call the precautionary principle. We try and prevent things happening. We take action to prevent things happening. We must, must be applied now. And as we did many years ago for ionizing radi radiation, X-rays, radiation from cobalt, we should adopt the principle that we reduce exposure to as low a level as reasonably achievable. And if we do this, we can probably avoid a public health emergency. Thank you for your attention.